What is going on everybody? In this video, I will be showing you guys how you can solve a system of ordinary differential equations or ODEs fully in MATLAB with the built-in command called ODE45. I will also be showing you guys how you can import discrete values from a tool such as Microsoft Excel into your MATLAB and solve your equations like that. Let us jump into it. So for this problem, I have projectile motion, as you can see on the screen. We have a rocket moving in the atmosphere. The force from my engine will be imported from Excel. My drag force can be given there. As well as my angle of attack, that value will be fixed. Over here, we have the equations of motion. The parameters will be your engine force, your drag, your velocity, and your displacements in X and Y and we will be solving for your velocity as well as your displacements in x and y. The equations can be seen there, dv over dt, dx over dt, and then dy over dt, where it corresponds to velocity x and y. The forces can be seen here on this slide. One of them, which is my force on my engine, that is imported from Excel, so it is discrete, and my drag force is simply half density velocity squared area times my drag coefficient of the vehicle. We will assume that everything here except my velocity is constant just to keep things simple. Let's get started. So let us jump now into MATLAB and I will show you guys how to do this step by step. So I have MATLAB open here. You can see all my workspace. And the first thing I have here is my engine force. I have it in my Excel file. So what this basically is, is that I have a simulation time of about 20 seconds, which means that you will have to define the force for the entire 20 second duration. And it can be seen here. I have my time values here and my Y values, which is my force can be seen there. So if I close out of that, you will simply have to make an Excel spreadsheet if you want to import the forces. And now let's go into MATLAB and start typing. So first I will type in a comment saying, OD45, then I will have, normally you will always have CLC, close all, clear all, because every time you run, you wanna start fresh. My time range is zero and 20 because I have a 20 second simulation. My initial conditions or my IC will be zero, zero, and zero, because both my velocity and my X and my Y points, I have that zero at first. So I will exit from there. And then my force, I will select XLS read, or this means my time, data.xlsx. That was my spreadsheet name. And my values were in between cells 2 and 22, which can be done like that. And my force can also be set as XLS read. Again, data.xlsx, and then B2 to B22, because that's where I had my force and my time values in those corresponding cells. So from that, I will have my for standard ODE45 format, TY is equal to ODE45 at TY. And then my file where my ODEs are stored at, it'll be called ODES, which can be seen here. So I will type in ODEs here and then TY, TFT. Now keep in mind that the differential equation solver only looks at T and Y. If, if you wanna pass a parameter, or what I'm saying is if you wanna pass a value from your function file into your differential equation file, you will have to put these values in there. I will get back to this more because this is not very intuitive. You will have to put the values in here because these are discrete values. And if I have to def define that in my differential equations, you will have to pass the parameters over. So you will have to put in T and FT here as well. So once you close out of that, you can put in time range. So it'll be solving over my time range of 20 seconds. Let me just fix my typo. And then I will have my initial conditions or my IC like this. So that so that is it for my, my, uh, my function scanner file. And if I want to plot my results, I can do something like figure, subplot, 1 and 2 and 1. I will get, so plot, uh, t, and then y, 
in brackets one. So my first column is my time, and then I can, first column here is my time, which is my T, and then my Y1 is my velocity, because Y1 corresponds to velocity, Y2 corresponds to X, and then the next one corresponds to Y, or the height. So the that is like this, and then I can also say something like X label, time in seconds, and then Y label is the velocity, and in let's say meters per second excuse me so and then I can also type in something like subplot 1 and 2 and 2 plot a cubic plot so in in many dimensions I can type in um, t and my x and my y values if I want them to show at the same time so I can say y in brackets 2 and then in comma y in brackets this so this will plot t on the x-axis It'll plot my x displacement on the y axis and on my z axis it'll plot my y displacement or my height. So it is just a qubit graph in many dimensions. So it is essentially a multi-dimensional graph. You can do this in MATLAB if you guys didn't know. So that is it for that. And then now I will have to define my equations because they are not yet defined. This will be done in a separate file called ODES. So we can go there and then I will show you guys how to do it. So here we are in MATLAB now and then it is time to now import the equations. So I will show you guys that now. You have to simply type in again function let me zoom in here function rk is equal to ODES because that is my file name and then tyftnf sorry uh, tytnft so the same stuff this line will be the same as what can be seen here. So I can simply copy that just to make sure I make no mistakes. And then put, we'll put that here. So these are now my, my parameters. And if I want to specify in decimals, I can say format long just to be more clear. And then now I will have to interpolate my discrete values, right? So ODE45 does chooses its own time step. You will not have to specify a time step because it optimizes from solving, but you, you will have to make your discrete values continuous, right? So because I have forced as a function of time in, in my Excel, those values are discrete, right? They aren't a function of anything. So if, if I picked a value at 1.5 seconds, I will not know what to do because I only have a value at one second and then two seconds. So the format for that is to say FT is equal to interp1 because this interpolates my values and then I can say T, F, T, and T. So it interpolates these two values with respect to my time I specified for my equations to be solved from. So you'll have to do, you'll have to do this here. I will define some constants. C equals my drag coefficient, density of air. I will just make up stuff here. Um, 0 0.025 meters square. That seems reasonable. Mass is equal to 25 kgs. My angle or my pitch angle will be pi, pi over 6. It has to be in radians, not in degrees. Make sure you keep that in mind. So, and then G is equal to 9.81, the gravity constant. And then from there, C is equal to half rho v square because so these values are constant. So I will define a constant C to call it that just to make it easier after. So now equation one is my velocity. So that will be RK1 is equal to engine force minus my drag force or C Y of 1. So this is my velocity here, Y of 1. So V squared is Y of 1 squared. So it will be that and then divided by my mass minus uh, G sine alpha. So g sine a or my alpha value and then my next one will be my x displacement so rk2 is equal to y of 1 so v times cosine of alpha gives you x displacement so if i have something like velocities like this and then my x axis is here v cosine of the angle in between is my x so it'll, be, it'll just be cosine of a or my alpha angle and then RK, my Y displacement would be Y of 2. Sorry, it'll be again be Y of 1 because 
y of 2 is my x, and then y of, and then my next one is my y, right? So it'll be y times uh, sine alpha here. Just to make a comment, y of 1 corresponds to velocity, y of, oh, sorry, y of 2 corresponds to x displacement, and then my last one, corresponds to y displacement or my height so that's it there and then now you'll have to be make sure that it is in a column format so all your equations have to be a column they can't be a row to ensure that it is done right you will have to go on here and type in rk is equal to rk and then one semicolon there because this will make it a column and yeah so that is it for the the file for my ODEs and now I will solve it and then let's see what results it gives us. Okay, it is now time to solve it. Let's see what we get. Hit run and you, you will have to run this file because this file is your original file. You will not have to run this one because this file will call my function file which is here. So let's do this. Hit run and wait what a second or two. So now it, it gives you a plot as you can see there, here is my time, 20, 20 seconds, my whole thing, and then my velocity is increasing slowly. So that's my one graph, that's okay. And then this one here, my time can be seen there. Over here I have my displacements, so I have something like X and Y there. So it tells you what the way you're flying, so you're going all the way up there as you can see. And my velocity is increasing, so it is going up much faster. So it is somewhat like an exponential function, but it is not actually an exponential function. It is just showing the way it's going up like this. So yeah, that is it for the video. And now I will explain to you a little bit more about why I did this the way I did it. So first thing is first, extra parameters, T and FT will be car carried over here. So that is why I have my T and FT there because these, these two values will be needed in the equation. First, you will have to interpolate, and then this will go into here. So because this is continuous values, you, you can't directly use discrete values in an ODE. It'll, they will have to be continuous because the ODE 4.5 is only meant for continuous solvers. So that is why you will have to use interpolate there. Another tip for you guys, for those of you solving this for research or anything like that, a school assignment and so on, always define your constants in, in the differential equation file because the reason why I'm saying this is because if I had to define these values in here I would have to go here and then type in all the values like you know CD alpha uh, beta angle or whatnot right because the, the less parameters you pass the better so any constant value which will not change in your simulation keep that in here because you will not have to type in type this stuff in there again so just a tip it makes your workspace your workflow a lot better. And yeah, that's it for the video, guys.